Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. Ed Gamble here, host of the Taskmaster podcast. Uh, we are currently trawling our way through old episodes of Taskmaster, episode by episode, getting down into that nitty gritty, talking about it task by task with special guests. We're currently on series two of Taskmaster and this episode of the TM pod, the TMP as uh, people are calling it, out there uh, in the skate parks, they're all calling it uh, TMP. A great idea that I say the kids are calling it, and then I do an acronym of the podcast. A great idea that I've come up with, um, and then you can all say TMP uh, as, as a little sort of catchphrase thing, a, a brill idea from me. Um, so uh, we're currently talking about series two, like I say, and today we're talking about series two, episode four, with Kerry Godliman. Not on Series 2, of course. We decided to get a bit of an outside eye for this one, but a Taskmaster expert nonetheless, a Taskmaster champion of Series 7. Uh, I absolutely love Kerry. She was brilliant on Taskmaster. Uh, she's going to be brilliant on the podcast. Uh, she really cares about Taskmaster. Uh, she absolutely loves watching it. Uh, she loves doing it. Uh, she's the perfect guest for this podcast. Uh, we are going to be drilling down into every task in Series 2, Episode 4. Uh, now, next week, Taskmaster Series 11 starts. So I'm just going to take you through the schedule of what we're doing podcast-wise. Uh, so today, uh, we're releasing this episode, and we're releasing our episode uh, based on Series 2, Episode 5. Uh, we're going to be chatting to Richard Osman about that. Uh, and next week, we start properly with Series 11, because on March 18th, Taskmaster Series 11 starts on Channel 4 at 9pm and it's going to be every Thursday for the next 10 weeks after that. So, brilliant lineup, as you know. Uh, fun, I mean, just just an incredible lineup. Uh, Lee Mack, um, we've got Jamali Maddox, Charlotte Ritchie, Mike Wozniak and Sarah Kendall. An incredible lineup. I'm very excited to watch it and start talking about it. So, we will be back on March 18th with that straight after the main show drops. So without further ado, this is the TMP, TMP with Kerry Godliman. Welcome, Kerry Godliman, to the Taskmaster podcast. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, it's an honour. Is it an honour? I think so. I feel like I'm part of an alumni that I'm really chuffed to be a part of. I love well, it. you're you're part of an elite alumni, of yeah, course, man. because uh, you are in the Winners Hall ah. of Fame. That's yeah. what I've decided to call it. Very tenuously, if we unpick that, it's one point in sausage or finger. That is, <laughs> <laughs> it's very tenuous. My uh, my place in that in that roll call. I don't think because no, because I think you needed to be you needed to be consistent. You needed to be good. You needed to be strong throughout the series to get to the point where it was down to one point in sausage or finger. <laughs> Um, so obviously, shout out to Jess Knapper, who's been oh, on the podcast man. before, who was one point away from uh, it was so from nearly winning hers. as well. It was so nearly yeah. hers. <laughs> Did that make you feel uh, more excited and better about the victory that it was only one point in Sausage or Finger, or did it did it make it did it sort of take the sheen off it at all? Uh, I tell you what, honestly, without wanting to sound like a wanker, I was so happy that there was no sheen to remove. It was all just good times and. She's so lovely. We'd all had such such fun. And at that last bit, I just genuinely didn't know if it had gone my way or her way. We knew it was close. Yeah. And and I was just giddy. I genuinely was like, oh, this is all... We're winning. We're all winning. <laughs> I think Sausage or Finger might go down in history as the tensest studio task in Taskmaster history. Oh, man, it was so intense. It, it was so intense and in that in that mo there were bits of that that I was so focused I don't think I've ever been more focused I felt like Luke Skywalker I just <laughs> I just the intensity of me ch trying to channel was that sausage was that finger just really really zooming down on that sausage finger moment so did you, did you want to win? Is that, I mean, look, I wanted to win. I'll put that out there. I, I don't feel ashamed of that feeling. I did How do you win. feel? Yeah, I did want to win, but you want to do it in that, you don't want to be a wanker about it, do you? But you do want to win, but it's really delicate, isn't it? That sort of like being competitive about clowning. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, essentially, we were all wearing big shoes and, um, you know, s squirty flowers. We were all dicking yeah. about. And and th and yet to be competitive about that just seems absurd. But yeah, I I suppose we all wanted to win, really, because you need to have that spirit to do it, don't you? 
a bit. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right in that it's a balance. I think you have to want to win a bit to engage in the competition totally. properly. Yeah, but totally. you have to laugh when things go badly as well. Absolutely. I'm not sure I always managed it. <laughs> I always like the way that they have like human tapas, where obviously there are people that clearly don't give a shit if they win, and their presence is equally valuable. <laughs> Yes. You know, so the people like you and me that, let's face it, Ed, we're not that dissimilar in that we did want to win and we were quite focused. (laughs) But you do need the other people that really look like they're having a breakdown and they don't know where they are. (laughs) You need them as well. I'd just like to focus on the uh, on the phrase human tapas there, Kerry. <laughs> I knew you'd like that. We'd I've like... never heard that before. I have, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. That could be a new a new name for Taskmaster if there's ever like totally. if 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 Marvel uh, ever sue Taskmaster for using the name Taskmaster because that is a villain uh, oh, in the Marvel universe. They could go to uh, human tapas. They could go to human tapas, and I you've think got to have a little bit it. of everything. Absolutely, yeah. it's a really important thing to bear in mind when you're putting together a Taskmaster cast. Human so tapas. If you were to compare your series, series seven, yeah, uh, and everyone's a different dish on a tapas menu. Yes, I love what, this. What what tapas dish would you say you are? <sighs> a staple, I think, like a potato based. A I'd patatas say bravas. <laughs> is that what it is? A patatas bravas. Yeah. That's yeah. who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I am. And then James and James was like something a bit experimental, where you're like, let's just give it a go. Let's just yeah. try that. Like a prune a prune wrapped in bacon, maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where it might work out and yeah. but it might not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, I think I'm a more sort of solid potato based thing. I mean obviously we're gonna have to go through everyone. You you will have to steer this because your knowledge of food is far superior to mine. I'll so, take what I'll take what I'll take what you say and I'll work out what Spanish dish best best relates to it. Okay, so Rod Rod would be quite a fiery, I'd say like a peppery, meaty sort of situation. Do you know what I mean? Like, a chorizo. Yeah, totally. Chorizo yeah. all the way. Uh, which gets us back on the sausage theme. So this is all. Yeah. <laughs> this is linking up. Um, what do you reckon Phil Wang? <laughs> what, was Phil, what was Phil Wang doing? I there mean, were g- moments. Given his, given his costume, we should have put chorizo for him as well. Yes, that's true. God, what, what would Phil be? He'd be an omelette. He'd be a sort of omelette thing. Yeah, like a tortilla type a tortilla, thing. Tortilla, absolutely. Yeah. A tortilla. Why, now, why why would Phil be a tortilla? Because he's wearing a yellow suit. That's the <laughs> <laughs> And then Jess, what do you think? What do you think for Jess? The thing is, you and Jess were so close. Maybe the issue was you were both patatas brother. <laughs> yeah, maybe we were both patatas. One of us had a more cheese base and the other one a chilli twist. Yeah. Slight or differences. May- yeah, maybe, maybe Jess would be like a... Uh, like a croquetas, oh, like a what's that? Di- uh, it's sort of like a deep fried crispy thing uh, with like ham and cheese on the inside. Lovely, it's delicious. It yeah. is a staple of tapas. Yeah, uh, but it's got a little bit of flair. How do you feel about that for Jess? Yeah, no, that sounds perfect. The flair yeah. is definitely how I would describe Jess. I think actually, uh, series seven is it, that's a great that's a great thing because all of those dishes fit together very well. Yeah. But you're getting a bit of variety. It's one of the it's one of the the best chosen casts, I think. I think everyone played their role perfectly. I really loved um, doing that series. I loved all those people. I had a lovely time with them. Did it ever? Um, obviously, there were some explosive moments in the studio. <laughs> uh, Even the where, memory you know, of them makes me giggle. <laughs> particularly between James and Rod. Yeah. Now and again. Yeah. Things exploded. Did it ever feel genuinely tense? Did you ever feel like you might need to step in? No, I was just a pig in shit throughout the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the more cross James got, the more I was like, <laughs> <laughs> just so happy. Because there's nothing more fun than James getting cross. It's just yeah. funny. It's just hilarious. So the more wound up he got, the more comedy potential I knew was available. Now, obviously, you picked up you picked up the nickname in your series of the Bosch Queen. I did, yeah. I have mixed your, feelings about your, that. Uh, no, it's, it, mixed feelings is it. So yeah. obviously, it was because you were straightforward with some mm-hmm. of the tasks. Bosch just got it done. I yeah. believe you even you would say Bosch now and again. I do say it now and again. I'm reluctant to say it because I saw on Twitter people are going to try and make you get me to say it. I'm like, oh, fuck off. Uh, I feel I, like maybe for the end of the podcast, I think when we've done the podcast, it should be. Exactly. Bosh. You've got to sign it off with completion. That's how yeah. the word works. <laughs> I called my tour it because I had such mixed feelings about it. Because I, there's one side of me that loves it. And I know that there's a sort of 
efficiency that means I get stuff done. And yeah. then there's this other side that's quite abrasive and not very patient. And I, I'm like, oh, I could do with a bit less of that nature. Yeah. You know? So it's a bit of duality about that. But I think when it when it comes to Taskmaster, I think yeah. for some of the tasks, you really do have to just bosh it, right? You do. And also, but I, I love... I mean, I love the whole kind of variety of tasks, but actually that that personality isn't well suited to the ones that require a bit more thought. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A bit of planning, sure. a bit of strategy, a bit... I'm like, oh, that's not my strong suit, that, you know. And maths. Maths was utterly humiliating. But in, Well, that's that's interesting because, if, if anything, maths should be the ultimate bosh, right? It should be. Because, because there's it's... rules that are all there, yeah. so it should just be bosh, 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 big bosh. Yeah, no, no, you're right. It should be, but that's the nature of the show, isn't it? It's sort of full of contradiction. So, yeah, with the, with the more creative tasks where they might say, uh, you've got 20 minutes to tell us what you need or you've got an hour to plan all of yeah. this. In an hour, it's quite difficult to bosh anything in an hour, right? Yeah, totally. Sometimes I would just be brainstorming. I'd feel like if I just shout key words at that cr- <laughs> crew. Gaffer tape, Velcro, <laughs> bamboo canes, spoons. And then they can put it all together and sort yeah. of see what I'm trying to achieve. That poor crew, the entire production uh, crew, must have <laughs> seen them. have seen the great and good of British comedy have absolute meltdowns. Yeah, and I love it when you see them... Like there was one of my tasks, I think it was one of my biggest failures, where I made them dance and they just look ground down. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, I, I spoke to Jess about this as well, but I think one of my abiding memories of your series is is cul-de-sac is that the name of the soap the soap yeah, that you did cul-de-sac with donna and donna Ab- absolutely brilliant and i think that's an example of uh where you can bosh something out and be creative <laughs> i'm so glad you enjoyed it because honestly i think it was my favorite task oh it's I, it's so it's so good and i, I think it, it it makes me think i think you and jess are one of the the ultimate teams out of I, all, all I of get, the taskmaster i totally teams. i loved it that they did a girls team and a boys team for our series i just yeah. loved that because we definitely, <laughs> we definitely just got, we clicked, and we and yeah. I don't know if we would have done if we'd been with one of the boys. It was just something, and to make it was like birds of a feather goes horribly wrong, wasn't it, cul de sac? <laughs> <laughs> I would watch. I would watch at least a full half an hour episode of cul de sac. Me too. I mean, I, I pitch, don't think you could I do much it. more than that because it's just so like. It's so back and forth and so high energy. I think <laughs> yes. at the end of the episode, you'd be like, I'm, I'm knackered watching this. <laughs> oh, man, that fight. And we knew from the beginning we were going to have a fight. But yeah. It was very clear we needed to have a cat fight. Yeah, I think you and Jess are definitely on the on the same page. Patatas Bravas and Croquetas go together like an absolute dream. Big time. Whereas Unless the you're boys, getting off the carbs, bo- then you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The boys team... There's something wrong with all of them, but it's different things. (laughs) Oh, man, the boys team. I mean, there were moments where I was just like, they need a key worker to just get in there and help. (laughs) (laughs) Like Rod will not listen to anyone else and always thinks he's right. Yeah. James was just angry with Rod the whole time. So anything anyone does, he gets angry. And Phil just pumbles around like Winnie the Pooh. So it's just one of the most useless teams ever. Yeah, absolutely. But there, isn't there something brilliant about the useless teams? My favourite useless team is Joe and David. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that. Was, I mean, there's that was a, a level of uselessness. Oh, it was a joy. I mean, <laughs> they made James, Rod, and Phil look really focused and efficient. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference is, I think James, Rod, and Phil were really trying, but they were just working within their abilities. Yeah. Whereas Joe and David just couldn't give a shit. Couldn't give a so, shit. They'd stop for a sandwich. Joe, in the last team task of the series, went to the toilet during a, t- during a time task. I know. And that shouldn't be so wonderful. And yet it is. They've earned that. They've earned that right. And I, I loved them as a team. And I had the added thing of being able to watch them going, I love this. It's really funny. They're not doing well in the task. And then thinking, oh, that's good. That means I get more points. So it's just so many layers to me enjoying that. Yeah, totally. Until I had to be an, on a team with David Baddiel for a studio task, which everyone uh, knows about. Yeah, yeah. So is, is cul-de-sac one of your favourite memories of, of the series? And do you have any other uh, favourite tasks? Um, I loved doing that circle in the snow. That was a standout moment. 
for me. I just, You're so the, proud of yourself. Oh man, the joy. <laughs> the, but again, that sort of luck, it's luck, isn't it? Like the one point in sausage your finger, it was like pure chance that it was snowing on my day. Yeah. And, uh, and I got a massive piece of paper in the garden called snow. <laughs> uh, um, so that was a, a high, well, I, there were just so many, the quick change. I love doing the quick change. And I couldn't believe when we all were in the studio, did you find when you were doing it that you assume, I always assumed that I'd taken the route one. I always just yes. thought, well, surely yeah. everyone's going to do that. Yeah. And then when you watch it back and you see that they're all coming at it differently, I just couldn't, the ways they approached that quick change, as I was watching them fuck it up, I knew I'd smashed it. I was like, Wow, if he's saving my video to last, I know I've smashed that task. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because I do not know what... The, what was James doing? What was he doing? I've got no idea. And the <laughs> video of Phil as well. Wow, um, Phil. Behind the door, getting changed slower than I get changed on a normal day. <laughs> it's like you just want to reach into the video and go, did you even read the task, Phil? <laughs> Quick change, Phil. <laughs> So let's talk about the prize task in this series two, episode four. It's coolest blue thing, mm. which is a nice, a nice category, I think. Did you enjoy the prize task? I love the prize that... task. That was one of my yeah. absolute favourite things. And I stand by all my choices. <laughs> I, ne- I don't look back on any of them and go, oh, I didn't do very well. I love all, I loved all the things that I came up with and I loved all the things everyone else. I thought in our series... The prize task was a lot of, um, le- there was a lot of fun to be had with that that uh, round. Yeah, I think it was, I think they were strong. I think for some reason in the in series 10, they were all just quite bad. It was very funny, but they were all quite bad at prize tasks. Yeah. So they didn't think it through enough or they didn't realise how much, how much focus there would be on the prizes. Yeah. And I love it when Greg's really disappointed with prize tasks, yeah, where he's really like, funny. screw you, raise your game. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the way you want to impress him with those prize tasks. I do. I, I engaged with it. Greg's a big part of it. You want to like make him laugh or surprise him or, you know. Yeah. I, looking back at myself during those prize tasks, it's pathetic. Like, I'm supposed to be friends with Greg and I'm sat there going, excuse me. <laughs> What about this that I brought in, please? <laughs> I love that section. But I, I felt like, especially with your prize task as well, I think Greg has an innate respect for you that definitely helps. Do you reckon? It, yeah, and I think I think you're you're kind of on the same page, especially with obviously the laminator. laminator. Yeah, the laminator was a, a glorious moment. This was really hard for me because I love stationery. I well, love. You think, you think I don't? Well, I, <laughs> I don't know if you love it as much as me. Oh, I do. Because I love it the most. Yeah. Right. I think I know what it is. As a stationery connoisseur, mm. instinct tells me, mm. because I know what the king of the stationery items oh, is. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if it's the same thing? And I genuinely don't know what you've brought in. Should we say it together? Yes. One, two, three. A, a laminator! laminator. <laughs> uh, so Doc Brown uh, brought in uh, Feel No Threat by the Average White Band. Yeah. Which he claimed was the coolest blue thing. Uh, because it had a blue a blue cover. Yes. I actually think, even though it was coolest blue thing, I think the choice, I think it was too cool for Greg to like. Do you know it. what? I mean, I, I, shall I say now what mine is? Because mine's quite influenced yeah, by please. Doc. Yeah, please. Right, what so I, I probably would have gone down, probably because I watched the episode and Doc, uh, I would have either gone for the album Blue by Joni Mitchell yeah. or Kind of Blue. What's that? Is there a Miles Davis one called Kind of Blue? Yes, I think it's Miles So I'd have gone for one of those two. It probably influenced by Doc, but he didn't pick... I mean, I know he's a muso, so obviously his music knowledge is better than mine, but everyone's heard Joni Mitchell and Miles Davis. They're two, like, known, more classic blue albums. But I think that's too cool, Kerry. Do you I think? think I'm yeah, not but sure how brief. it would have done. Let's go over the brief, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coolest yeah. blue thing. Right. Now, do you undermine the brief? Do you subvert the brief? Or do you stick to the brief? This is a delicate... <laughs> this is delicate. Yeah, it is delicate. And it depends. totally depends on what mood Greg's in. Totally depends, which you cannot predict. He's a very yeah. unpredictable beast. And also, sometimes when you're super earnest you can become like uh, a wanker and there's something to, 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 to get out of that, isn't it? Hype, yeah. Heightened earnestness can be really funny. So I would go, <laughs> I'd go in hard on the call angle and say Miles Davis. Um, 
Do you want to know what I would have done? Go I've on. thought about it a lot. Yeah, of course. I would have got a, a cool bag uh, and I would have had it signed by all the members of Blue. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, that's brilliant. You, <laughs> you've really, you've gone for the literal, you've gone down that yeah. road, haven't you? Yeah, yes. so literal. Yeah. But again, depends what mood Greg's in. He could totally. have just said, I don't he, like the boy band Blue. I hate it. And he, would, he, he might have thought that was clever or he might have thought it was smart ass. And you just yeah. can't, you can't be sure. He normally thinks things I do are smart ass, to be honest. <laughs> then they go, oh, little, little lad. Oh, look, well done you. See what you've done yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Joe and John both interpreted blue in the sort of raunchy. Yeah, bit of, uh, bit of blue. Sense. Bit of blue. A, a bit of blue, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, we should have seen that coming with Joe Wilkinson, who is, I think if I had to describe him as someone who'd never seen him before, I'd describe him as the embodiment of seaside grot. <laughs> Um, now you've you worked with Joe on a number of occasions. Is that is that something that would you expect that sort of thing from him? The, I would uh... on Taskmaster, not in a green room, but on Taskmaster. <laughs> yeah, that is what I would expect him to bring to the table. Yeah, the seagoing sex pot book. That's what I he would with. expect it from him, but I wouldn't expect it from John. It was a surprise with John, and yeah. I thought Joe had it in the bag. I thought he's won it. Yeah. Uh, it's a very funny way to interpret it. Yeah. He had a funny way of backing it up, talking about how much he loved it and that it was his favourite book. Yeah. And then John... And then John came s- along with that weird little pig thing. The pig Lanzarote fridge magnet. <laughs> Absolute filth bag. Uh, and obviously it's then on a level with Joe that it's filthy, but just the fact it's a pig means it just pips Joe to the post. Yeah, it just... Yeah, just nudged it in there. It was a definite sausage or finger. Yeah. <laughs> pipped to the post. Yeah, it really was. It was a sausage or finger. Yeah. Uh, a sausage in this case. <laughs> um, Richard brought in his son's riot helmet, which leads me to ask a lot of questions about their home life. Yeah, I didn't get that. I, that He went with obscure. He went it obscure. Was, it was very obscure. Mm. I feel like there may have been more of a story there that we didn't get. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes, well, you know, there can be loads of fun to be had and then it doesn't make the edit and... Unfortunately, yeah. sometimes that happens, and I bet that was one of those moments. Yeah, sometimes with the price task, you just need to be able to sum it up in a few words. Yeah. And then get out. Mm-hmm. I mean, Catherine brought in a blue dog collar, which, as far as I could work out from how she was describing it, was like a shot collar. Yeah. And I like that she just uh, unashamedly was like, that's cool. <laughs> and everyone's going, is it though? Yeah, is it? I mean, we I sometimes play rude Scrabble. And when you start playing it, obviously words like bum and willy and all like you have rude words. But then after a while, you'll try and uh, persuade your teammates that random words are rude if you say them rudely. Yeah. So if you say, uh, I don't know, like lamp, but if you go lamp, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's suggestively rude. And it was yeah. like she did that with cool. She was like, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah. is it? <laughs> you keep saying it, it's still not cool. Yeah. Uh, I brought in a hot floor to make my bear dance. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, it's not so cool. I have a dog whose job it is to bark when she hears a potential threat. Oh. It's very annoying in the modern world. So I've got her this blue collar that emits a tiny pss, pss to stop her barking when she barks. Isn't that cool? Is it cool? <laughs> um, task one, rescue the cat. Best rescue wins. Your time starts now. The cat answers to the name Patatas. Oh, wow. There we go. Oh, my God. That's so interesting. We've got a motif. We've got a motif. We've done it. Um, this was this is an interestingly worded task because it's very open to interpretation. What does a what does a res, what makes a rescue good? Yeah, although they all seem to go down the same road, which was just poke it out the tree. <laughs> yeah. Lob it out the tree was how they interpreted rescue. Yeah, all sorts of things got thrown at that cat. But what I think else could didn't... you have done? How else would yeah. you have approached that? It's a really it's a really tricky one, but also I think they didn't stress enough in the wording of the task quite how strict Greg was going to be about the welfare of the cat. Oh, I didn't interpret it that way either, though. Yeah, so because obviously in the studio, Greg's saying, "How dare you throw things at Patatas? You're treating Patatas uh, awfully." Yeah, yeah. And if that, you know, if they'd said in the task, "This is the Taskmaster's cat. He loves the cat," then maybe yeah. You might have- you might have done more. But or then best they should have rescue. used a real cat and then people might have been a lot more 
Careful. They should have used, should have used they a should real have cat. They should have gaffer taped a real cat to, <laughs> to a tree and they'd have got different results. No, I think I think you're right. There's kind of no other way to do it other than... How would you have done it? it or... I probably just would have lobbed stuff at it and then but then definitely tried to catch it because Catherine won because she caught it. She treated it like a real cat. Yeah. Yeah, so no, she got that was Alex a nice to catch touch. It. And she was she was talking to the cat throughout as if it was real and no, calling right. to Patatas by name. So I think that was the key there was to the best rescue. You don't want to knock a cat out of a tree and then not no, catch it. No, you're right. I didn't the ground. I didn't I didn't interpret it that way. I was just like, get it out quick. Yeah. Who could yeah, have foreseen? It's not... That's how I would interpret it. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not quickest. Because Joe did it in the quickest time, but he came third. Because he was throwing tennis balls and yeah. then he threw a football. And that's not that's not the way you rescue a cat. I think the way to actually do it is probably with a long pole like Richard was trying to do. Yeah, but appallingly. Appallingly? And then mm. he just gave up. Yeah, he really lost his patience with that one. I hate that feeling. I do remember that feeling on a couple of tasks where you're like, I'm really not enjoying this. Yeah. Oftentimes it did involve cardboard because the one I didn't enjoy was the tower with the boxes. And I remember thinking, I don't think there's anything good is going to come from this. I don't... Yeah. <laughs> cardboard is not a pleasing substance to... Um... And I think Richard was trying to make a pole out of cardboard and it wasn't yeah, working out. Yeah, just flopping over. Yeah. It's very Card- frustrating. Cardboard will often let you down. Those tasks are really difficult, aren't they? When you feel like you're not you're not doing it well, and also I had a few of those where I'm like, I'm not doing this well, mm. but I'm not doing it so badly that it's funny. Yes, exactly that. And then you start thinking, how is this going to be good telly? And you start getting really angry, and yeah. that makes you worse at the time. And then task. you're on the outside of yourself, and you just it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then the crew are all looking at you like there's something wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had that feeling. Even even, even Gary the cameraman <laughs> stopped smiling. You know that was bad. Prior to the catch, what what had you thrown at the cat? <laughs> Uh, a football. Yep. Some tennis balls. Yeah. A tennis racket. Yep. A lacrosse stick. A lacrosse stick. <laughs> a croquet mallet, a crutch, and a space hopper. Thank you. <laughs> My sort of plan was, if I don't rescue the cat, at least I can give it some things to play with in the tree. John also called the cat a dick, and then he called me a dick. Just so you know. <laughs> uh, let's move on to task two. Conceal this pineapple uh, on your person. No part of the pineapple may be thrown away. You have 20 minutes, after which Alex will inspect you. Such a creepy sentence. Uh, (laughs) Most incorrect guesses wins. Your time starts now. I'll say straight away at the top, I think this is my favourite task in the series. Yeah, definitely. It's It's so good. Really it's good. so good uh, and obviously features pineapples, which uh, is a classic Taskmaster uh, fruit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would be excited to do this task, I think. Didn't you do one similar with an aubergine? We did. We had to. That was the first task that they showed, I think, on uh, on our series. Uh, yeah, we had to hide three aubergines yeah, similar. Uh, in, in a room. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, similar sort of thing. <clears throat> and I loved doing that. I loved yeah. trying, to, trying looked, to trip Alex up. Yeah, that looked like a lot of fun. I was, and I got to like, I ripped the sofa open, pretending I was, in, <laughs> as I said, I think I said, I was pretending I was in prison and they were searching for drugs. Um, oh, so much fun. Yeah, I would have, yeah. I would have loved, I would have loved this as well. Um, what, what would have been your first thought when it came to the, the pineapple? How, how would you have, uh, I wouldn't have, would have eaten or drunk any of it. I was surprised. Really? No, because I wouldn't have, inter- I would have assumed that that wasn't allowed. That wasn't in the spirit of the thing. Same with Catherine Ryan. So you're both yeah. rule followers. Yeah. That I would have, I just would have thought, well, how, how, yeah, how can he possibly, that doesn't, that doesn't count. That's not the right approach. So I would have probably chopped it up really small, like maybe even diced it or minced it yeah. and, <laughs> and just distributed it everywhere. I'd have gone for yeah. that kind of, up my sleeves. I don't think anyone made good use of their sleeves. It no, would, what about pipes? Action. Like a kind of pipe situation. So it was literally piped around your whole body. I think I'd have gone down that road. I guess the issue with that technique of putting it everywhere is that every guess would be correct. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Who was John really smashed it, didn't he? Because he... But yeah, but I suppose that's kind of what John did in that he hid it in 17 different places. Yeah. Um, and somehow, I think it, maybe he just didn't cover. So he had 17 different places, but Alex uh, incorrectly guessed 20 times. It was a slightly wacky task, wasn't it? Like, I, yeah. I, it was a little bit interpretive because I didn't know that you were going to get points for that. Kind, like, I, 
I don't I didn't quite understand that you would get points for Alec guessing something and then it not being there. Yeah. And I probably would have benefited like Catherine did from Alex being a bit coy about female body parts. <laughs> so I'd have just put it all in my bra and just yeah. hoped that he wouldn't want to say bra or tits. I mean, <laughs> that would have been my approach. It's such a good technique. You can always rely on Alex being being embarrassed yeah. by uh, the female body. Yeah, He's... I mean, it's a definite advantage for female contestants. When in doubt, stick it somewhere female and he will not draw attention to it. <laughs> Champion of Champions is going to just be him just blushing the whole time. There's yeah. three, three women Lisa in Champion of Champions. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Really exploit that, for sure. <laughs> well, all our bras will just get bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Things we're stashing down there. Even in tasks where you don't have to hide anything. <laughs> yeah, totally. We'll hide each other in each other's bras. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, John John did do a great job. I initially thought it would be quite a bad job because he had a bowl of pineapple exposed on his head uh, <laughs> and also a fly flew out of his sleeve. <laughs> that was great. It's so good. Um, Catherine, again, like like you say, yeah. she. I think Catherine's technique was pretty good. She went with a sort of... Hers was smooth. I loved her. Yeah. The efficiency of that. Where did she get that corset from? She. I, I assume uh, she brought that, she had that with her. She must just have right? that kicking around, a Spanx, a pineapple hiding Spanx bit of kit great and she did a sort of cling film nappy and then almost did like a like a drag tuck oh it was beautiful i mean it was like good drug smuggling strategy like that is a woman who could come out of columbia without anyone suspecting anything (laughs) but what was funny about it is when she had all her clothes on when she sort of covered it all up it looked like great she you couldn't see pineapple there at all no and then when she revealed it (laughs) a lot of how did i not spot that (laughs) Because she wasn't she wearing a boiler suit at the beginning, so uh, yeah, she had the boiler suit on. I so, mean, yeah. good old boiler suits, man. You can just shit yourself and nobody knows. <laughs> well, good. At least people know if they ever see you wearing a boiler suit in public. What's it's happened? It's very possible I'm wearing a nappy <laughs> under there. <laughs> Richard, I thought should have he should have been better at this because he only hit it in four places. Yeah, he's he... got a lot of body mass. Yeah, he's, he's probably got like 150 places on his totally. body. Totally, absolutely, could have been. Yeah, he could have had yeah. loads more hidden. He's like a map of Britain. There's so many different places. <laughs> yes. Um, Joe, obviously, just just awful at that. Just terrible. Uh, he faked Alex out, though, which I think is kind of a key thing here. With in, uh, I wouldn't have thought that far ahead mm-hmm. uh, to fake Alex out, but Joe did do the... He had a roll of tape under his hat uh, as a sort yeah. of obvious lump, and Alex thought there was pineapple under there. But So that was quite clever, but... Apart from that, he didn't. He did not do very well. But he was Paul. sticking to his tapas persona. Do exactly. not deviate from your persona. Exactly, he was the anchovy. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, it was five points for John Richardson, uh, four points for Catherine Ryan, three points for Richard Osman, two points for Doc Brown, and one point for the anchovy Wilkinson. <laughs> Have you got some in your bra? No. In the front area? What do you mean the front area? Sort of in your pants. Wow. <laughs> there it is. Um, so task three, quite often in these early series, uh, there's like four t- four tasks, four film tasks. Uh, yeah. Whereas I think now this tends to be, uh, tends to be only three. Uh, but this third task takes two parts. So the first part is four of the contestants, apart from John who get to set their own task. It's set a fun task. Your task must take no longer than one minute. You have 10 minutes. Your time starts now. Again, this this would have panicked me hugely. But you would... I think the advantage of being in one of the latter series is you would... Because they're in the second series. They don't... Like, they're quite simple tasks that they set, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But I guess they have to be if it's, if it's one that only takes one minute. I think they're... The thing is, I, I, when John had... So John had to do them. Part two is, is John had to do all the tasks set by the panellists and then in the studio had to guess uh, who had set each yeah. task. And he is mortified when he finds out that no one else did these and that they're going to show a montage yeah. of it. But I think he did I think he did really well. Do you? Not with... <laughs> I mean... Guessing he did really well. The Guessing he smashed it. He smashed guessing. I couldn't believe how uncommitted he was to the makeup tutorial. <laughs> But I mean, he d- again, what a missed he opportunity. It. He could have camped his head off for that. He could have had yeah. a really good time. <laughs> but can you imagine that? No, you're right. John wouldn't have done that. Think of the tapas. <laughs> Richardson's the... not doing that. No, you're right. You're right. But I was like, come on, John. 
He did it within within his abilities. Yeah, you're right. Uh, and I, I think he I think he did a good job of that. I think he did a, as well as he could at the William Tell Overture, uh, which was Doc's <laughs> task that he uh, set. Yeah. Uh, if you listen to last week's episode of the podcast, to uh, listeners, you'll you would have heard Doc do a full rendition of the William Tell Overture. That's obviously a skill he has, uh, and decided to set as a task. The strongest one that Joe, I mean, it's a very funny task that Joe set. Prove how, prove how strong you are. Whoever looks the strongest <laughs> wins. Yeah, that's funny. Um, but John didn't do it good job there he just sort of meekly picked up a table (laughs) yeah he could have made more of that yeah uh and then richard osmond quite a naughty task i think enjoy this clip of the taskmaster whoever finds it funniest wins you have one minute your time starts now that's really cruel it's really cruel on on poor john and on greg really imagine having to sit there watching someone else watch your stand-up yeah it's brilliant it's genius (laughs) So, no, I don't think John did do well on watching Greg stand up. And at the end, he went, I've, I've seen it before. Like, Come on, mate. <laughs> I would have been throwing myself into that. I would have been screaming, laughing. Oh, I would have tried to make myself cry. Yeah, I'd have gone the other way, yeah. We'd have yeah. just bigged it up, yeah. Yeah, maybe that would have been too much, though. It would have looked sarcastic after a while, but... It's a risk worth taking. Um, John got four points there for guessing everyone's correctly. He did really but, well. But I think it was... Maybe easier to guess because the other people's task wasn't someone else will be choosing it, so make it yeah. seem like you, it's not you yours. Yeah, like Catherine's, of course it was Catherine, but if Catherine knew that she was going to be guest on that, she wouldn't have done that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what would you, what, if you had to set a task, Kerry, mm. that took a minute, what sort, what sort of oh. thing would you set? And it oh, doesn't, God. it doesn't have to, it can sound like you. I'm not, I'm not going to set it as a thing that other people are guessing. Oh, do you know what? I don't know. I, I mean, it, a minute's just not long, is it? It'd be it's really not. I'd... It would be something like a ball getting in a goals or balls in a hoop or something, you know. Yeah, something practical. And, yeah, yeah, like how many how how many balls can you get through a net in a minute? And the yeah. most, most wins something really ball based. Bosh, ball bosh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's an efficiency there that is non negotiable. It's not interpretive. Ten balls. Right, you get the points. <laughs> <laughs> task four is a team task. Uh, using only the items on the rug, construct the best thing for the taskmaster. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts now. Wow. I was really underwhelmed by what they achieved. <laughs> it was pretty bad. I yeah. think you and Jess would have smashed this. Oh, man. I mean, straight off the bat, there were wheels there that were not exploited. I mean, I'd have made some sort of moving vehicle. Yeah. A little go-kart. I watched that episode with my 10-year-old son, and we both were like, go-kart? Yeah. Absolutely, a go-kart, 100%. Staring you in the face. Staring you in the face. Four wheels nicely laid out with poles that fit in the holes. Yeah. Bang. Oh, it's a bang. That's a bang. That's not even a bosh. That's a bang. (laughs) And you could have had, like, a roof on it. And you could have done all kinds of things with that go-kart. It could have had, like, cushions and plants. It could have been a den on wheels. Well, they were Doc, Joe and Catherine were initially going to do a den. What I really liked about their effort is that without Catherine, that would have been nothing. Oh, my God. Catherine was totally driving that project. So Catherine drove the whole thing. And what I liked is they were just building stuff, putting together whatever Catherine told them to do. But then Catherine would change what it was. Every so often. She'd be like, it's a den. It's a tiki bar. She what landed is a tiki, on tiki bar? bar. What is a tiki bar? Like a, um, like a sort of, is it Hawaiian based? It's sort of tropics based. Right. You know, like the, all the drinks would be like big pineapples with stuff coming out. And Lovely. those, uh, those like stone sculptures. Nice touch. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And actually, that reminds Greg, me it... Greg loves a tiki bar. Oh, he really enjoyed it. Well, yeah. let's face it. It was way better than the other one. But um, uh, I, Joe in that was a massive pain in the ass. If he'd been in my group, I'd have I'd have banished him. I'd have yeah. said, just said, go, just go, Joe. Well, do you want to know what my note is about that? Go on. I am like Joe whenever I build a flat pack with my girlfriend. <laughs> well, it could end a relationship, that kind of attitude. Yeah, I mean, she just gets on with it and then I stand around going, oh, there's no point. This is awful. <laughs> um, John and Richard were, if anything, worse that I mean, Catherine is the only good person in this task. I think John, John and Richard just—it's like they had a breakdown. What? It is like watching, you know, those documentaries where they get kids like Seven Up or whatever. <laughs> it, it was like one of those where, like that that child psychologist with the moustache, kind of 
voices of ET of children yeah. sort of in a room with some clay. It was they like let, that. They let them get on with it, and yeah. they're like, "What do children do when we're yeah. not there? What yeah. do children do when we're not watching?" And it was exactly like one of those. Because yeah, all that stuff in front of you. I mean, sure, my first thought wouldn't be a tiki bar, but it certainly wouldn't be a tickle station. That was weird. I mean, I don't know what was going on with Richard was that and John. Richard's suggestion. I don't know. I mean, it, Richard's hair went out of place. I've never seen Richard look so pissed. He, just, <laughs> he, he looked like he'd been at a tiki bar and then someone yeah. had said, right, you've got to make something. He was like, oh, all right. I mean, he was, it, was, it was very entertaining to watch those two. They looked like they'd had about three glasses of wine. Yeah. Like yeah, mid-drunk. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I think you would have had to have a couple of glasses of wine to come up with a tickle station. That sounds like something you'd see at like a fetish convention. Yeah, like it was brilliant, and the little going, tent oh, was tickle station. Yeah, but you to do it undercover, so it. Has yeah, to you really could. <laughs> I don't like to see the hands. Yeah, I don't the want to hands, know who they are. The hands could just go anywhere. Let's <laughs> keep, keep it a secret. <laughs> and all Richard does is he just whatever they're building at the time because they change it around a little bit as well. Because uh, John starts doing a German accent at one point, and then Richard just keeps saying Greg's going to love it. He just goes, Greg's going to love it. Because you've been on your own a lot, and then when you finally get to be with some of your teammates, you can just become overwhelmed with giddiness, can't you? And it, yeah. And that's what I think we were watching with John and Richard. With yeah, that. I think it. I, I think, think they right. were just so happy to see each other and hang out. Yeah, I think you're right. That one watching John and Richard, I it reminded me of me and Jess making a den when we had yeah. to make a den, and we just yeah. we were just having a lovely day out. <laughs> <laughs> there were moments where you're like oh are we being timed or filmed what's happening it was four points for uh, doc joe and Catherine, and a deserved one point for john and richard a, a continually terrible episode uh, for richard osman i cannot tell you how disappointed i am with this wait this is nonsense isn't it it's it's some it's some metal some plastic Maybe and a cloth could, it could, could be could be, be ho- this could be horseshit I'm really, I don't know if I'm sort of the only one who thinks this isn't anything. So, it is studio task time, uh, which was create the highest tower using only these potato-based items. Potatoes! Patatas! Patatas again! Your potato tower must be self-standing, your potato tower must be built on the table, your potato tower will be measured from the tabletop to the highest potato point, you have 100 seconds. Again, yeah, this is a, a potato episode. Yeah. Um... Hard. I think this is one of the ones where I might have had a little meltdown if it didn't work properly and ended up throwing potatoes everywhere. I found the studio tasks my least favourite tasks. Yeah. I just, it was a different vibe to being in the house or, you yeah. know, doing... doing more was, pressured. More pressure. Uh, I don't know what it's like now without an audience. That must be completely different. Then you must just feel like a person having a breakdown. Like, yeah. <laughs> literally i mean as we often do in stand up there is that fine line where you're like is this an art form or is this a breakdown <laughs> yeah. i don't know where that line is and i felt like that on the studio tasks yeah i think that i quite liked the studio tasks when the audience were cheering and like going come on and shouting for you and it felt a bit you know it felt fun it felt like you were doing the generation game or something yeah 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 cracker jack um, but then there's somewhere there's such like small things you were doing and really having to focus and there's not much for the audience to look at no so there's dead silence and there's an audience watching you do something really weird and then you get in your own head and think this is bizarre this. yeah really bizarre it takes you out of it a bit yeah no i can't imagine doing it without without an audience that must feel that must feel really weird mm. um would you have had a technique with the with the potato based items I, I probably would have gone down the way joe did i'd have used the waffles and gone square and gone yeah logical it feels like the only the only way to do it. But then Doc is the only person with a self-standing tower. At the end, everyone else is touch, touching that the was, towers. that was chaos. That was chancy chaos, which yeah. is chaos, which is a word I just made up. I absolutely love it. And I'm going to continue to use it <laughs> along with human tapas. What a lot of, what a lot of this episode has given me. <laughs> well, you know, whenever we end up doing a podcast together, we have a language-based sort of splinter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> splinter conversation about words. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so that was that was chaos. You're right. It was um, total chaos. I I would have been very frustrated with that. So 
So the final scores for this episode, Doc is the winner with 18, closely followed by John on 17, Catherine on 15. Always consistent, Catherine. I think that's how she got the victory. In and the she end. won, uh, didn't she? Yeah. She won the series. Yeah, yeah. she was a very consistent competitor. Um, Joe got 12 points and Richard, awful episode for Osman. He must still be kicking himself about this. <laughs> five, five points. Less than half. Less than half of the person above For him. such a capable man, that is very yeah. disappointing. Yeah, very disappointing. We've got a few emails uh, from listeners, Kerry. Uh, yeah. We might have covered we might have covered some of it, uh, but we'll uh, we'll have another quick chat around it. Question for Kerry Godliman. This is from Abby in Portsmouth. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you think is going to be your biggest competition on the Champion of Champions? Can't you? It will be you. Do you think it's me? Yeah, because everyone I've spoken to said it's Ed. Look out for Ed. Because I'm just so bare, bare-faced competitive. Well, and good, you're good at it. You, I mean, look, you're hosting Sometimes. a podcast on it. You, That's you're true. And I don't it. think that means I'm good at it. I think that means I'm just an absolute nerd. <laughs> and I really am a nerd for this show. Like, and I would still be a nerd for this show if I hadn't done it. Well, I think that love will win out. And I think you will, you will reign so. the glory of that love. I hope so. I hope we all, I hope we are all competitive, but I hope we're all not really competitive all of I the time. Ca- I can't see it. It's going to be a nightmare, Kerry. Well, if we're I just all... don't think that 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 human tapas is going to bring that vibe. I just don't see you, Lou, Lisa, and Richard, and me being that. Com- do you know what I mean? I think it will be fun. But is it is it human tapas now? Because it's human tapas in the initial series, right? But is this not just a, a plate of patatas bravas? Now you've got five winners, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Was it what was it like in the other champion of champions? I think they were all quite different. Weirdly, I think we're more similar as a lineup than they were as the other champion of champions. Oh, so really? I don't think we've got five boshers. We haven't got five boshers and we haven't got five like Bob Mortimer kind of, you know, like wacky. It's not that sort no. of angle. No, Lou's, Lou's the closest to oh, that. Oh, yeah, Lou, Lou can So maybe, that. maybe you know, maybe it's more tapas. It's more tapas than I was giving it credit for. It's all to play for, Ed. It's all to play. When it can hang on one point, who knows which way the wind's going to blow on this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an email from Sarah in Rochester. Uh, Kerry, we saw that you keep your Series 7 trophy in your garage. Mm. Um, now, in case people can't remember that, on uh, Series 9, uh, the series that I was on, uh, Katie Wicks uh, brought in, I believe one of her prize tasks was... Steal your something. trophy. Yeah, it was steal something from someone else's house and it was the trophy that you won because it was just knocking around in your garage. Yeah, it still is. <laughs> and it still is. You, <laughs> Katie brought it back to you? Katie brought it back and it's still in my garage. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see mine taking pride of place uh, in my office, uh, just behind me there. Oh God, yeah, wow. Um, but yours, yours got. Did it immediately go in the office? Or was it displayed at all? Uh, it went straight in the garage. It's weird uh, and creepy, and I do not want it in my living space. <laughs> <laughs> this is from uh, Jennifer in Surrey. Um, what do you see next for Donna and Donna on your soap opera cul-de-sac? Oh, uh, it, you are my favourite contestant ever. Oh, I, Donna and Donna could go in any direction. I mean, there's so much potential for Donna and Donna. Especially, I believe that to be true. Yeah, totally. Especially that you've got a caravan. It's got wheels. It could go anywhere. I yeah. mean, it literally could go anywhere. They could go on the road. It's a road movie. Donna and Donna go around the UK with I, Alex. I feel like... <laughs> You can make easily make a web series of Donna and Donna. Yeah. I'd love to watch it. I think you could film in the Taskmaster caravan because if you text Alex and ask him for something, he always says yes because yeah. he's the nice, nicest he's man in the, the world. He's just the nicest man ever. I think he Alex spends probably 20 hours of the day coming up with tasks and filming Taskmaster and then the other four not sleeping but doing birthday messages for people. I mean, my son played the Taskmaster theme tune on the piano at Christmas time and I sent it to Alex and then yeah. Alex sent me a lovely little video back of him congratulating my son on his... It was just so, so kind of him and it, it, my son was so chuffed. It was so sweet and he must do that all day. Yeah. All day. I can't think of how much money you would make if you did one of those, um, you know, people can do messages for money now. Yeah. No, so he doesn't like a do it service. for money. He's just Am an I... altruistic oh. beast. Me? If anyone asked me for a birthday message, no. Nope. Five, five, five grand. Five grand. <laughs> five grand. <laughs> this is from Jerry in NYC. I don't know if it's uh, Jerry Seinfeld, but thanks for listening, Jerry. Uh, <laughs> We saw you standing for Katie Wicks when she was ill. If Greg Davis became unwell, how would you fancy your chances as the Taskmaster? Oh my God, I would love it. I think you'd be great. I'd love to be the Taskmaster. 
think you'd be really good. I oh think my God, that's never occurred yeah. to me. And now I'm ecstatic with the thought. <laughs> I think you're a perfect balance uh, between sort of, I think you'd give harsh but fair judgments. Harsh but fair is one of my key phrases. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't take any shit from anyone. And I celebrate creativity, but I also applaud efficiency. Oh, great. And I'd, I'd actually love to see you in the massive chair. I'd love to be in the massive chair. But what Greg, Greg one of my favourite moments ever is when Greg picked, did he pick James up and turn him upside down? Yes, he did, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't bring that sort of physical presence to no, the role. No, the physical <laughs> presence wouldn't be there. But you'd you'd fill that you'd fill that role very well, I think. Oh, man. I'd like to see you in the big chair, and weirdly, I'd like to see you do it in one of Greg's suits. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'd happily, <laughs> I'd happily be the taskmaster. All day I think long. you'd be one of the best choices out of uh, out of previous contestants. I'm just saying that. I'm but... over the moon with that. Greg's uh, also uh, let us know on this podcast before that uh, he will have to die before anyone else is the mm, is the cast That could happen. That could happen. That yeah. might happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything more. <laughs> Now, Kerry, at the end of the Taskmaster podcast, uh, yeah. we like to ask uh, our guests to rate their experience on the podcast between one and five points. Uh, now, I'm not going to tell you what the average score is. I just want about you how to... they feel about it, but how you feel about the experience of being on the podcast and how much you've enjoyed it, or yeah. how much you feel like you've got out of it. This oh five, yes, good, thank five you. Five out of now... five, all the way. Well, thank you very much. I will take that five points gladly. Uh, and I will see you in the studio for Champion oh, of Champions. It, it's on, Bosh. <laughs> there we go. A great episode with Kerry there. Uh, we will, of course, talk to Kerry again, uh, probably when we come around to chatting about Series 7, I'd imagine, uh, if she would like to come back on. I think she had a nice time. She rated it highly. Uh, but don't forget, next week... Taskmaster Series 11 starts and we'll be talking about that 18th of March 9pm on Channel 4 straight after pop back listen to the podcast episode with a special guest we'll be chatting all about that episode I believe the opening guest we have is Richard Herring champion of Series 10 we thought that was a good way to kick things off uh, and also, Richard uh, loves talking about Taskmaster. He just loves talking, doesn't he? Uh, so come back here on March 18th to listen to that. Go and listen to the next episode of this podcast, which actually is talking about Series 2, Episode 5. It's out now with Richard Osman. But for now, we will see you again. Well, immediately if you go and listen to the next one. See you in a bit. Bye! <laughs> For more Taskmaster, subscribe now!